This is the response of another active filter. Uh, it's a LTC 1562 made by Linear Technology. So let me show you the circuit, the data sheet, the breadboard, and uh, the other things. And I think what you'll see is the the shape of this. This is uh, actually a four-stage filter. It's a quad uh, active filter building block. In other words, it contains four four sections. So let's take a look first at the data sheet. Here is the data sheet from Linear Technologies for the LTC uh, 1562. It's a very low noise uh, and low distortion active RC quad universal filter. Just reading that from the data sheet. In other words, what it means is it has four sections each of which is uh, a universal filter section and it has better than normal performance in terms of noise and distortion. The, on the left it talks about the features and as I always say I have no connection with linear technologies or actually with any with any commercial enterprise at this point. Oh, the only connections I have are with uh, academic institutions and those are not paid positions they're purely voluntary so so uh, the the features you see on the left I won't go through them the application that we saw in the very first part of this video is a uh, bandpass filter uh, and I'll show you the circuit in a little bit down at the bottom they show a typical application that uh, will create a, a low pass filter and this particular chip is optimized to for frequencies between I think it's a hundred kilohertz and mm, let's see I don't remember what the high end is, but it's in the several hundred kilohertz, uh, 10 kilohertz to 150 kilohertz. Uh, it says it up there in the features. I just didn't see that. Uh, I know I'd read it before. The, uh, the way that this system works, you only need three resistors. If you remember the... Uh, by quad that we did using the UAF 42 uh, it used only three resistors uh, to uh, set everything up here is a uh, a schematic of one section you'll notice that there is a, an integrating capacitor from the output to the negative input uh, or the inverting input of this amplifier. And this resistor, which uh, sets the Q, is, if you'll notice, it's really just connected across that capacitor. If you follow this line up from there and this line up from there, you see that this resistor is actually just paralleling that capacitor. The output of this amp is fed back through another amplifier and through a resistor back to the inverting input. And that provides additional feedback through this resistor. And this resistor is the, the resistor, the primary gain determining resistor. So the, uh, the Q of the circuit is primarily set by R Q and R2 is used in conjunction with Zn to determine two things. One is the gain of the of each stage and the other is whether this is a low pass or a band pass filter. So in in our case, well, let me just show you the circuit that we are actually using. Here it is. Let me 
move this breadboard over a little bit. The, uh, each of these is a section. We're, we have waveform one of the analog discovery connected through this resistor. Now all of the resistors here are uh, in kilo ohms. So this is a 150 kilo ohm resistor. Channel one of the, sc the scope, channel one of the analog discovery is also connected to the input and then channel two is connected to the output and we were using the network analyzer. So the way this works is the input is applied through this resistor. In this case that is the Z1 from the schematic you saw earlier. It, you can replace this with a capacitor if you want to have uh, change the characteristics of the filter. But with a resistor here, what you get is a bandpass filter. And then these two resistors adjust the parameters of this stage and then this feed-forward resistor uh, connects the signal to a corresponding section here. You may notice it's very symmetric. There's a 68K input off, uh, or uh, feedback because this is the inverting signal which is the output fed back to here. Uh, and uh, V1 is connected over to this point. Once again the inverting input and is connected to V1 through a 68K and a 47K from V2 just as over here. So then the system repeats. In other words a 68, a 47 and a 68 forward 68, 47, and 68 forward, and so on. So each section is identical. Now, you can get varying performance, for example, by changing these values, you can adjust. This particular design tends to have more cutoff at the low frequency than at the high frequency end. As you may notice, it was still pretty good. It was over 60 dB down at the high end. But the uh, you can, you don't have to keep the same resistors in each stage. As long as each stage is tuned to the same frequency, by adjusting the Q and the gain of each stage, you can account for a variety of things. For example, uh, if you want, you can lower the gain of the uh, first stage and thereby lower the total noise of the system. Similarly, you can change, you can have more Q in the second stage than in the first and thereby lessen the impact of the uh, uh, source impedance on the Q of the overall network and so on. You can read about that in the application notes if you'd like to. So this is the, the filter that I've built and one of the reasons that I wanted to do this one is this is kind of my favorite. I like the 1562. If you're going to be building an active filter this is the one I prefer. I paid $19.64 for one of these in single quantity. For this you get four sections. Because of that you can arrange these four sections in a variety of ways including each section can be a completely different filter. So you don't have to have them, each of them be a bandpass filter at the same frequency. You can have one be one frequency and one be another. You can have one be a low pass and one be a high pass. You can have one as a low pass and a, and a band pass and a high pass and a, and a notch filter. It has a lot of applications. And for 20 bucks, you basically get four universal filters, so about five bucks a, a filter. And it has some of the best performance of the active filter blocks. Now, let me kind of wind this up by saying I'm not trying to sell 1562s or anything for that matter. The, what I am trying to do is to show you that if you look around a little bit, you sometimes can find a better chip for what you're trying to accomplish. You may remember with the UAF-42 that we did the biquad, the, uh, that was $20 each and you could only use that for one filter. 
So let me now show you the breadboard and then I'll, I'll wrap this up. Here is the, the breadboard with the analog discovery on the left and the chip right there. I don't know if it's going to focus. Looks like it's not going there. Okay. There is the chip and you notice that the the breadboard is pretty symmetric. In other words, this is one filter section, this is another, and this is the interconnect between the two. Then it connects up to here and here's another filter section and there's a connection across there and there's another filter section over here and then this lead is the channel 2 of the analog discovery. So that is the LTC 1562 used as an active filter. We could have set this up in a variety of other ways, but the idea here is just to show you both the usefulness of chips like this in cutting down on component count. Obviously you could do the same thing with, with uh, a quad op amp. The advantage of this particular uh, device is Unlike the switched capacitor filters, it doesn't use a clock and it is optimized for an active filter application. And it's very low noise. If you bought a quad low noise op amp of similar characteristics, you would pay about the same as you do for this chip. And this chip, it, because it, it contains the four with, the, with a precision integrated capacitor already built in, it can actually save you parts on a, on a board if you're building an active filter. Now I realize a lot of applications these days have moved on to digital filtering, but I still like to go back to, to some of the original designs because in my mind, particularly for audio and low baseband applications, chips like the LTC1562 still have a place in your design repertoire. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. And I think this is going to kind of wrap up the active filters and I'm going to go back to, uh, to working on the uh, uh, Art of Electronics lab manual. We started with, one of the, with a section of that lab manual and we have kind of gone down this rabbit trail for uh, a few videos. But I'm going to return to that. But before I do, I think it might be useful if I did a short video on the simulators that are available for free that you can use, for example, to simulate this circuit. And I've done that using a program called LT Spice, which is also available for free from Linear Technology. And so maybe I'll show that in my next video. In the meantime, have a nice day.